Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, June 4th. Oh my goodness, we're already into summer, aren't we? So, but let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the Scripture. We're still reading from Tobit today. Anna sat a reading from the book of Tobit. Anna sat watching the road by which her son was to come. When she saw him coming, she exclaimed to her father, to his father, Tobit, your son is coming, and the man who traveled with him. Raphael said to Tobiah, where he, before he reached his father, I am certain that his eyes will be opened. Smear the fish gall on them. This medicine will make the cataract shrink and peel off from his eyes. Then your father will again be able to see the light of day. Then Anna ran up to her son, threw her arms around him, and said to him, Now that I have seen you again, I am ready to die. And she sobbed aloud. Tobit got up and stumbled out through the courtyard gate. Tobiah went up to him with the fish gall in his hand, and holding him firmly, blew into his eyes. Courage, father, he said. Next he smeared the medicine on his eyes, and made, it made them smart. Then, beginning at the corners of Tobit's eyes, Tobiah used both hands to peel off the cataracts. When Tobit saw his son, he threw his arms around him and wept. He exclaimed, I can see you, my son, the light of my eyes. Then he said, Blessed be God and praised by his great name, and blessed be all his holy angels. May his holy name be praised throughout all the ages, because it was he who scourged me. It was he who has made, had mercy on me. Behold, I now see my son, Tobiah. Then Tobit went back in, rejoicing and praising God with full voice for everyone, for everything that had happened. Tobiah told his father that the Lord God had granted him a successful journey, that he had brought back the money, and that he had married Raguel's daughter, Sarah, who would arrive shortly, for she was approaching the gate of Nineveh. Tobit and Anna rejoiced and went out to the gate of Nineveh to meet their daughter-in-law. When the people of Nineveh saw Tobit walking along briskly with no one leading him by the hand, they were amazed. Before them, all Tobit proclaimed how God had mercifully restored sight to his eyes. When Tobit reached Sarah, the wife of his son, Tobiah, he greeted her, Welcome, my daughter. Blessed be your God for bringing to you to us, daughter. Blessed is your father, and blessed is my son, Tobiah, and blessed are you, daughter. Welcome to your home, and blessing with blessing and joy. Come in, daughter. That day there was joy for all the Jews who lived in Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. 
The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was teaching in the temple area, he said, How do the scribes claim that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? The great crowd heard this with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we hear the next of the long section of the story of Tobit and Tobiah. And just a clarification in case you haven't picked it up, and I'm sure you probably have, you're all bright people, but you've probably noticed that Tobiah is the father Tobiah is the father that in the readings earlier in the week, you know, the, the uh, bird dripped droppings in his eye and he went blind, cataracts formed and he's been blind. And now his son Tobiah has gone and has found a wife and come back. And because their, wife, their marriage was blessed, he has, you know, they bring back a certain ointment, it's put on his eyes and the scales drop from his eyes. So Tobit can see again. So Tobit, father, Tobiah, son. So, let's move on to Jesus then, into the gospel. So why do you suppose the crowd heard Jesus teaching with delight? That's always an interesting term. Why were they delighted at what he had to say? Well, was it because he disagreed with the scribes? Well, there were people who didn't like the scribes. The scribes could be really annoying, as we know from the gospels. So maybe that was it. Was it because he could successfully debate with all the different types of religious leaders he encountered? Maybe he was entertaining. You know, we find people on TV, commentators and so on, and we find those commentators that can deal with any person they're interviewing, you know, sometimes diplomatically, sometimes not. Well, maybe they, he was an attraction because, you know, he could really deal with the scribes and put keep and the religious leaders and keep them in their place. Or was it because and I'd like to think this, in their hearts, they somehow su su suspected they were in the presence of that Christ, that Messiah, that long-expected anointed one who would restore and occupied and oppressed Israel to the glory of King David's time. And, you know, do they dare to hope? Isn't that the great line? Do, they, do we dare to hope? And maybe that was the reason. Maybe they saw this and said, this, this really could be the guy. Maybe this, is, this really could be the guy. So maybe that's the reason. Everyone had their own idea of how, and this is one of the problems is, everybody had different versions of how the Messiah was going to come. You know, everybody, in many cases, they thought it was going to be a David-like person. You know, that he was going to come in a flaming chariot, he was going to wipe out all the opponents, and so on and so forth. So how was the Messiah going to come, though? What would he do? For many, poor Galilean didn't seem to fit that model. Jesus just didn't, you know, there wasn't the image that they had of what the Messiah would be like. But for the poor and impoverished crowds, they found a kindred spirit in Jesus. Oh, do we dare to hope that he's somebody like us? Wouldn't that be great? He set them afire with hope. Hope rewarded is also a theme in today's lesson for Tobit, which I talked about a little bit. Anna and Tobit are waiting. They're waiting with patience. They're waiting with perseverance for the return of their son. Tobit's been blinded, as I said, and their son Tobiah has gone to fetch some family money to sustain them. Today he returns with hope in the form of both the money and a bride. Furthermore, he comes with a miracle cure for Tobit's blindness. No wonder Tobit rejoiced with delight. 
over the ways he believed God had blessed him and his family. He got his sight back. He got his son back. He got a daughter-in-law in the whole process. He probably sang Psalm 146 in his joy. God gives sight to the blind. God raises up those who are bowed down. His perseverance and his trust have been rewarded. When in your life have you responded to God's blessing with delight? When was the last time that a prayer was answered for you? How did you respond? Did you respond with that delight when that prayer was answered? Or did you just, was it just kind of a, a one-off, a toss-off? Oh, well, well, finally, my prayer was answered. Or did you really rejoice? And my brothers and sisters, everything is a package. It's not just what we ask for and how we go about asking for it, but how we respond afterwards, how we live our lives with gratitude. We have to go through our lives with an attitude of gratitude. So much, none of, none of the things that we have are we entitled to. I know there's a, a big thing in the United States about entitlement. You know, I'm entitled to this. I'm entitled to that. We've got a lot of that going on right now. You know, I'm entitled to be in this country. I'm entitled to have money. I'm entitled to... It's not about entitlement. It's, not, it's about being grateful for what we have and rejoicing for what we have and being, being thanks to God, giving thanks to God all the time for whatever we have in that day, for every meal we have, for every gallon of gas we have in our car, for every person when we meet, whether that person is you know, a problem or not, because many of the people that we meet in our lives know they may not make us happy, but they may be a lesson. They may be something that we need to know. So my brothers and sisters, as we go through life, we should be like Tobit. Tobit who waited for joy, you know, blind, waiting for his son, you know, waiting with joyful expectation of what was going to come. And it did. And he thanked God for it. And we should too. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the young people who are preparing for marriage with the support of a Christian community. May they grow in love with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, let their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Govern by your spirit, we pray, O Lord those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you, just not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And yes, that was a phone call. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. It's Saturday. It's Friday afternoon. Let me go see who's trying to get in touch with me.
Amen. God bless. Have a good day.